Oh yeah, Rivers here from Some Cool Tech, and today I'm going to show you the TronSmart Draco AW80 Android Media Player. This player and others like it on my channel are full-fledged media players running a pure version of the Android operating system. You can play videos, games, and run thousands of apps on your big screen TV with it. There's two versions of the Draco. The Meta, which has 2 gigs of DRAM and 16 gigs of flash, and the Telos, which has 4 gigs of DRAM and 32 gigabytes of flash. Other than that, both versions are the same. Same processor, same graphics, same Wi-Fi, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual unboxing experience. So once you remove the player itself, you can see all the accessories are in their own individual box, which I think is a nice touch. Here's everything that comes in the box. So you've got the player itself, the remote, power supply, HDMI cable, USB cable, and a powered serial ATA cable. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes. Now let's take a look at the ports, because the Draco has more ports than any other player that I know of right now. On the left side of the player, you've got a serial ATA port, which you can hook up to an internal hard drive such as a laptop or desktop drive. you got your micro SD card slot, and that slot is good for cards up to at least 128 gigabytes. And you've got two USB 2.0 ports. On the back, we've got the Wi-Fi antenna, which works with 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. So it's got Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, and AC. On the back, you've also got an Ethernet port, a USB 3.0 port, HDMI that can support 4K output, an analog video out, an optical audio out, and your power plug. On the front, you've got an infrared port for the included remote and a status light. And on the bottom, you've got some rubber feet and ventilation holes. And finally, the most important hardware is inside. This has got a new OctaCore All-Winner A80 processor, which is the big little design. So it's got a quad-core A15 based processor and then a quad-core A7 based processor. This processor turns out to be nice and fast, and we'll test that more in a few minutes. It's also got a PowerVR GPU, Bluetooth 4.0, support for H.265 video, and Android 4.42. And finally, let's take a look at the included infrared remote. This remote is only good for putting the Draco into and out of standby mode. It doesn't even have any air mouse functionality, which you need because the Draco doesn't come with a toggle launcher. I'd recommend getting an air mouse remote control like this one from TronSmart, the TSM-01. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. Now it's time to hook the Draco up to my 4K television set and see how it looks and performs. The first time you boot up, you'll see this plain, kind of boring looking launcher, and it doesn't even perform too well. But this is kind of like a blank slate, and we can go ahead and install all kinds of different launchers on here. First, I installed Nova Launcher, which is one of my favorites because it's really fast and has a lot of customizability as well. You can also use something like TV Launcher, which you can see I've installed here. This lets you use the included IR remote to navigate whatever apps you choose. It costs a few bucks, but you can customize it however you like, and it's simple to use. I'll add a link in the video description. It would have been really nice if TronSmart would have included software like this since their remote control really needs this type of launcher. I guess they spent most of the money on the hardware because the Draco gives you the most processing power of any box that I know of right now. They need to perfect their software a little bit more though. Now let's take a look at the video playback. So here I've got some 4K video that I shot in Hawaii playing back on Kodi, which is XBMC version 14. XBMC version 13 came on the box and it was choppy and didn't really play that well, but 14 is working much, much better on here. I tested MKBV movies, which played pretty well, but there is the occasional hiccup, maybe because the software is still in beta. And here I tested a 1080p 60 frame per second clip that I shot on my camera, which usually brings a lot of these media players to their knees, but it played pretty well on here. There's also MX Player, which came pre-installed and did a very good job of playing back movies. Overall, video playback was pretty good, but not quite as smooth as the video playback of the Minix Neo X8H. Now let's take a look at some benchmarks on the Draco. So here I finally customized everything the way I want with Nova Launcher and all the apps I want are installed. And let's go ahead and run Linpack on here. So Linpack just gives you a straight CPU benchmark. And this guy gets a really good score of about 275 to 325. So really nice score on here. And now the benchmark that we've all been looking forward to, the N22 score. So this tests all the different components in the system and gives you one total score. And it got the best score that I've ever seen, 53, 354. I wanted to take a look at the individual components and see which one scored the highest to get this great score. I put together a table comparing the Draco with the popular AMLogic S802H CPU scores. So here we can see that the Draco powered by the all-winner A80 chip came out higher in a lot of areas. So first off, the multitasking was more than doubled. The RAM speed and operation was just about doubled as well. 
Now the CPU performance more than tripled as well as the floating point performance and that's most likely because not only does the A80 have 8 cores but also it uses a newer A15 ARM architecture instead of the older A9 used in the AM Logic device. So right there those three were a big part of the score being so much higher. Next we come to the 2D graphics which was almost identical and 3D graphics it actually scored slightly lower. And we see that the storage I.O. is about double and the database I.O. is about the same. So it may have a little bit faster data transferring around the system. I wanted to do one more thing to test out the CPU, so I ran Antutu in the background and then checked CPU-Z. And sure enough, all eight cores are going like crazy here. So this could be another way that the processor is getting such a good score. Also, I noticed the wattage while running Antutu is pretty high, about 15 watts compared to about 5 watts when it was idle. Okay, now I want to take a quick look at some of the nice features in the settings menu. So over in audio, you've got audio pass-through and some different output devices. In the display settings, you've got adjustments for brightness, contrast, saturation, which I think is a nice touch. Plus, of course, you've got your resolution of 1080p and 4K is available as well. And finally here, you can see the storage is all lumped into your one 16 gigabyte partition, which is the way to do it. I don't know why these other boxes make multiple partitions. It's just so much harder that way. And again, it can take SD cards up to 128 gigabytes at least. Here's another cool option. If you want to install Ubuntu Linux on the Draco, you can. There's a beta version available. It's not 100% perfect, but if you want to give it a shot, you can. I'll put a link to more info on it in the description down below. And by the way, the Draco comes pre-rooted, so this is nice if you want to install apps like this Addaway, which blocks ads, or a restart app over here, like Reboot Control, or Ultimate Backup, which I use to back up all the apps so I can just automatically reinstall them if I wipe the device. The problem is a lot of apps, like games for example, won't run on a rooted device, so I installed the exposed framework and then installed Root Cloak so that I could run apps that wouldn't allow it to run when they're rooted. To sum everything up, this is the best player that Tronsmart has made so far. It's the fastest box that I know of too, so if you're looking for pure speed, this might be your guy. It's still got one or two bugs, so hopefully those will get worked out soon. I'll add more info about the pros and cons during testing in the video description as well as all the hardware you saw in the video. Be sure to check out Some Cool Tech on Facebook for more info on the Draco and all the boxes I review plus sneak previews of upcoming players and my opinion and thoughts on the players. Thanks again for watching, and as always, aloha.